So in this session we are going to learn about syntax of for loop and if you have not seen while loop session make sure you see that lesson because in that lesson we have also discussed about some of the looping fundamentals. So it is very important that you see that session and then only you see this session because in this session I am not going to talk about fundamentals of looping I am just jumping straight to for loop syntax. So now let's say if you want to print number between 1 to 20 how we can do that. So typical syntax of for loop is it begins with a keyword for and then you need to specify some variable name. So here we are going to say number. Now you can uh, specify any name. So typically you will see most of the pro uh, people are using i uh, for variable name but you can specify any name. Okay so I'm just going to use number and then we need to use in keyword. So in is keyword. Uh, you will notice that whenever you type any keyword that color of that word changes to green okay so we have seen that color of for and color of in has changed to green so that's how you know that something is a keyword now here we are going to make use of range function and inside range, range function I'm going to tell 20 and then uh, similar to while loop whenever for statement ends we need to provide colon and then hit enter and then in this block we need to provide whatever action we want to take so in this case we want to print all the numbers so if you made a guess that I need to write number then you are correct so here we need to write number so what do you think is going to be printed here so if you are thinking that it is going to print between 1 to 20 so uh, let's see whether you are correct or not so once we hit enter it has printed starting from 0 until 19 okay so range is basically telling that it uh, this for loop should be terminating before reaching 20 okay so 20 is the exit criteria and it is that's why I'm not going to print 20 now again whenever uh, you use range like this in that case it starts from 0 so initially when this for loop started number got assigned a value of 0 and then it kept on incrementing by 1 so that's why we have numbers starting from 0 until 19 now let's say you wanted to print starting from 1 until 20. So in that case we can specify starting range uh, in the range function. Here I'm going to say 1 comma 21. Okay so we know that 21 is the exit statement so 21 is not going to get printed. Only value starting from this starting point which is 1 until this ending point is going to get printed. So let's do control enter and now we see we have a number starting from 1 until 20. Now let's say if you want to print all the odd numbers in that case what do you need to do. So range function also have uh, in range function you can also specify with what number you want this to be incrementing. So here I'm going to tell as a third argument I'm going to tell increment by 2. So now this loop is going to start from 1 and then it is going to increment by 2 every time. So it will not print 2, it will after 1 it is going to print 3 and 5 and so on. So let's run this program and see what is the output. So now you can see we have list of all the odd numbers here. Now similarly if you wanted to print list of all the even numbers in that case you could have started this starting range from 2 and if you run this program it is going to print all the even numbers. So uh, one thing you would have noticed that how simple for loop is when you compare it with while loop. So that's why you will see that most of the uh, programmers just use for loops and they don't really use while loop. Now uh, let's say you want to print all the numbers starting from 5 until 20. In this case I guess you would have already guessed what you need to do. So starting position you need to change it to 5. And then you don't need to specify this increment by because you want to print all the numbers from 5 until 20. So let's hit control enter and see the result. Okay so you can see that now we have printed numbers starting from 5 until 20. And we have already seen how we can print all the odd numbers and all the even numbers. Now let's see how we can uh, loop through all the characters of a string using for loop. 
okay so here you can see we have a variable which is called name and we have assigned a value of john to this variable now if i do print name in this case you will see that we are getting output of john now let's say rather than this you want to print each letter one by one in a print statement in that case you can make use of for loop so i'm going to say for and here we need to say for again if you remember syntax of for loop you need to specify variable name so here i'm going to say letter and then we need to use in keyword so we are saying for letter in name and colon so now notice here python already knows or python is smart enough that it knows that this name is a variable which contains a string so it is basically going to loop through all the characters of this string and now here we are going to print letter now once i do control enter now you can see that this print name is printing john and then this for loop is printing all the characters of this name one by one okay so that's how you actually loop through all the characters of a string now let's say this name had been something like john smith in that case you would notice we have john then we also have space and then we have smith okay so regardless of whatever you have in the string it is going to uh, iterate through all the letters one by one and we have discussed so much in detail about lists and tuples so let's see how we can traverse through all the elements of lists or tuple again syntax is very simple so all we need to do is we need to use for and need to define a variable name so in this case i'm going to say for fruit in fruits print fruit so this fruit is variable name which we are defining here while in the in the for loop and this fruits is the variable which is uh, having all the fruit names okay so we are saying for all the fruit in this fruits list print all the fruit one by one so let's hit control enter and now you can see the output is that it is showing all the fruits one by one in a new line I'm just going to comment it and remember when we had printed fruits okay in our list lesson in that case we had got output like this okay so in this case it has printed output as a list and that's how for loop is different than you know printing all the element of list so here if you see it is printing all the element one by one and also printing in a new line so basically you are iterating through all the elements of a list now let's say along with uh, this fruit name you also wanted to print what is the index position of all of these fruits okay in that case what you can do is there is a function called enumerate so we are going to make use of that enumerate function so here we can say enumerate fruits so what enumerate does is it enumerates through each index and also assigns that index to one of the variable which is available here and the value is being assigned to second variable okay so that's the reason whenever we are using enumerate in that case we need to specify two variable names here so first variable name let's call it index and second variable name is going to we are still going to call it fruit so what we are saying is that for index and fruit in enumerate now notice this index and fruit these are just variable names this can be any variable name so this variable name index is going to keep all the index position and this variable name fruit is going to uh, keep all the actual fruit names so now let's print index comma fruit and let's do control enter and see the output now you can see that dates mango and apple are at position 0 1 and 2 and we are seeing the same in the output as well okay so this is how you can uh, print index as well as all the elements of a list using enumerate function in a for loop now syntax for uh, looping through tuple is exactly the same which you did for a list so i'm just going to copy paste and going to run it here and this is going to work as well okay so whatever we uh, whatever we learned for lists that stands true for 
tuple as well whenever you are looping through list or tuple. So now here uh, we are saying we want to loop through all the fruits until and unless we see banana. So once we see banana we just want to uh, don't continue any longer. So in that case we are what we need to do is we are going to say for fruit in fruits and here we are going to define a condition which is called if fruit equal to banana in that case what we want to do is we want to break okay so break is a keyword and what it does is it is just going to exit out of for loop okay so after this we want to print fruits so please notice in this case it is not going to print banana it is going to print all the elements before banana so our output should be you can see we have one two three four five we have five fruits before banana so our output should be these five fruit names so let's run it and see so you can see output in the output we have got first five fruit names and once it reached banana it just exited the for loop okay so that's how you can loop through until some specific element so now in the next statement uh, we are going to loop through and once we find a specific fruit we just don't want to print that specific fruit but we st uh, still want to continue printing the next element okay so in that case we need to copy the same code and rather than break what we need to use is called continue statement okay so what this is going to do is once it finds banana in that case this statement is going to be true and then it is going to move to next statement and next statement we are saying continue so what continue does is it just moves the cursor back to this position okay so logically whenever it sees continue it is just going to start uh, the for loop condition okay so basically it is not going to go to this print statement and just going to continue back to the for statement so let's print it and see what is the output which we receive so now you can see we have still list of all the fruits but we do not have name of banana okay because we were saying whenever you find banana just continue do not go to next statement so that's why it just continued looping through and it printed all the other fruit names and it did not print banana now uh, let's see what is the next action which we need to do so here we are saying print all the items and also print message once uh, I mean all the items has been looped through so in that case we can use else statement in for okay so I'm going to say for fruit in fruits print fruit and then we can use else statement and we can say all items or all fruit names are already printed so how this is going to work is that it is going to loop through all the fruit names and once all the fruit names are finished then else statement is going to get executed and then it is going to print this message so don't confuse this else statement with if else statement in if else statement either if blocks get executed or else block gets executed however when you are looping through for a loop in that case whenever you are using else statement in that case for loop is going to be used for all the items and then for the final or once say all the items are finished for the final line this else statement is going to get printed so let's do control enter here and let's scroll down now you will notice that our last line is saying all fruit names are already printed so hopefully now you have understood how you can make use of a for loop and how you can iterate through numbers list tuple and how we can perform different type of operations such as break or continue operation and how we can use else in for loop for any question, please feel free to write in Q&A section.